ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us for the first annual World Fitness Business Owners Summit. I'm Rana Saini, and along with Selena Scobel, we are the proud co-founders of WF Boss 2012. Now, we're expecting an absolutely amazing event. It's going to be the biggest summit ever held of fitness business owners throughout the world. It's going to be an absolute game changer. But before we get started today, though, there's just a few important things you need to know here at WF Boss. The first is there are no sales pitches by presenters. You won't find one pitch by any presenter throughout this. Now, I'm sure many of you have attended other events where there's uh, sales pitches after every presentation. They try to sell you their product or their service. Now, that won't happen here at WF Boss. So put your credit cards away. The whole point of these sessions is to educate you on the latest technologies, the latest knowledge, and the latest thought leadership as it relates to fitness business owners. Now, number two, participation is everything. You will get what you give in these sessions. So if you put your hands up, if you contribute, if you ask questions, if you engage in the audience, if you post questions on our Facebook group and tweet your learning, you will get the most out of your experience here at WF Boss. The only failure is the failure to participate. So those who don't get involved will not get the most out of these sessions. And we encourage you at every point possible to get involved and make the most of it. You have an absolutely amazing opportunity ahead during our complimentary pre-summit session. So take full advantage of every session and, and ask anything you want of, of all our presenters. Okay, so today we are very privileged to have joining us Ken Baldwin. He's the executive director of the National Posture Institute, America's number one posture and body alignment educational program and solution. So he's here to share with you implementing a postural edge to help grow your fitness business. Just so you know, guys, if you have, if this is your first webinar, please note that everybody is on mute, so we can't hear you. Um, if you have a question for Ken during his presentation, please type it into your question box, which can be found on your control panel, and we'll get Ken to personally answer them for you at the end. All right, so I'm going to hand it over to Ken. Uh, Ken, uh, here we go. Okay, so without further ado, we are honored to have Ken on board for WF Boss 2012. So please welcome him to the screen. Ken Baldwin, uh, accept the screen and it's over to you. Thank you, Rhonda, very much for that nice introduction and welcome everybody for attending my webinar today. Um, I hope everyone's been having a great day and I know that many of you are from different locations uh, throughout the United States and actually the entire world. And just to give you, uh, if you need to contact me uh, after the webinar is over and if you have any questions at all, uh, as Ron had said, you can uh, either type questions in, uh, I'll respond towards them towards the end, or if I'm not able to get to them, if you'd like to, you can send an email to me. My email address is ken at npionline.org. And then our organizational website is here for additional information. And of course, we're also part of Facebook too, so you can uh, like us on Facebook after I'm done with the webinar. So a brief overview of my background. Uh, I'm a full-time assistant professor at the State University of New York, and I oversee an undergraduate degree program in fitness and wellness leadership. And the posture assessment program that we're going to be going over today, we incorporate this posture assessment program within the degree program. So it's a strong point of emphasis within our curriculum. So in a way, the 20 students that we bring into our university program every year, I assess their posture and body alignment and design an exercise program. So over the course of four years, working on changing and adapting their alignment to enhance their balance and uh, postural status. In addition to serving at the State University of New York, I'm also the Executive Director of the National Posture Institute, and we've created three educational programs to so we'll go over shortly. If you're familiar with IDEA, I chaired IDEA's National Personal Trainer Committee, and I'm originally from the state of Massachusetts and chaired the Senior Fitness Subcommittee for the Massachusetts Governor's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports. Also, I've served on committees for the American College of Sports Medicine, AFERD, and the Medical Fitness Association. In addition, 
before I started working in academia, I ran a personal training and fitness business. And at the time, I won Boston's Best Personal Trainer of the Year three times and Ideas National Personal Trainer of the Year. I'm also the senior editor and lead author for ACSM's Resource Manual for Personal Trainers, the second edition. So that's a little bit of my background. And so let's go over some of the objectives that I hope to go over with you today. And again, we only have approximately 25 to 30 minutes. So this is going to be a, a short overview of implementing a postural program into your facility. And I'll go over the date of the actual main summit webinar coming up. But some of the things that we're going to go over today are some strategy and some understanding of the importance of incorporating posture assessments into your facility. The second thing is we want to go over how it can help as an educational tool for your clients that are in your facility and help and how it will help to uh, increase your membership, retain your current members, and bring in new ones. And the next thing we need to look at is how we're going to incorporate this model into your facility. And we'll go over some uh, concepts of branding and marketing. So a few things about the National Posture Institute. We have incorporated and developed three educational programs. One's called the Certified Posture Specialist. The second one is called Certified Resistance Training Professional. And the third one's Certified Goniometry Specialist. And again, I'm going to be giving you a brief over your posture assessments today. But the main summit webinar that I'll be conducting will be on Tuesday, September 25th starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and you can look at the time based on your location throughout the world on WF Voss's main web page and the title of that will be a postural analysis program for business growth and development. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to be going over with you how uh, I incorporated posture assessments when I started my own fitness business, giving over you the state of the industry and how things are positioned now for you if you own a health club or you're starting your fitness business. We're also going to review why it's important to look at implementing a posture program. And then the fourth element is a little bit of a business understanding and how a posture program can help your business grow. So when I started my first business, when I first started my personal training business, I was based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And as I started working and developing the business plan, I realized the best way in which I can look at uh, attracting new members and building up a strong client base was to really focus on the medical side of things. And one of the main components that I felt would be an attractable attraction for bringing in new members was incorporating posture assessments for all of our new members and all of our clients. And one of the things that I found is that the majority of the population, whether you're working with children, to older adults, to corporate executives, to college and professional athletes, that everybody has postural issues. And based on performing a really detailed posture assessment, you can screen out members and uh, new potential clients from health risk factors that they may have. And the majority of the population, as you know, if you're already training clients or you're involved in a fitness business, has some form of musculoskeletal disorder or physiological disease. So one thing I really focused in on was how can I work with allied health medical professionals that include physicians and physical therapists within my business model. And so by bringing in posture assessments, posture assessments green people, if they had any type of musculoskeletal problem which may require, let's say, a surgical procedure or they mean or they may need some physical therapy or phys physiotherapy sessions before they actually actually started their exercise program. So within my business, I formed a partnership with Harvard Pilgrim HMO, which is a large health insurance carrier in Massachusetts, where we let them know that we were performing detailed posture assessments where their physicians and physical therapists felt comfortable referring their patients to us to go through the screening process, which eventually allowed us to increase our membership and also allowed us to work on developing a very strong client base. From there, we expanded to providing our programs to different business and corporations, retirement centers focusing on older adults, condominium and hotel associations, and then directly sending uh, trainers and staff to people's homes. So that's a little bit of my background. So what is poor posture? You may want to write this definition down 
so you have an idea of how you can use this definition within your marketing materials, whether incorporating it in your website so that you have a strong link, it, let's say, towards the top of your web page, or it'll say posture programming, or within your marketing materials within a brochure or within your business card. So this is a definition in which I reviewed roughly 10 to 15 textbooks. And it's the faulty relationship of various body parts which increases strain on the musculoskeletal system, producing a less efficient balance of the body over its base support. And so why do we want to look at implementing a posture assessment program? Well, number one, I really feel out of all the assessments you can do, whether it's muscular, muscular strength and endurance, cardiovascular assessments, um, uh, flexibility testing that this is the number one assessment that you can perform on a client that you're working with and the reason is if you plan on teaching any exercise movements to a population within your health club or fitness facility you need to have a strong understanding what that members alignment is prior to its initiating an exercise program and so I'm going to show you a 12 year old that I worked with so you can see how poor his posture alignment is when I first assessed him and what his posture alignment looked like three weeks later. So I'm going to show you those pictures coming up shortly. The other thing that it shows for the fitness professionals that are on your staff and your organization, it's going to show their knowledge, skill level and concern. And I think that's really a strong important factor when we look at where health clubs and fitness facilities can look at positioning themselves. And it's really showing that the staff that you have on board, that they have that knowledge, skill level, and that they show that concern of how they're able to show a, a new member or a personal or training client their skills and abilities and making their posture improve and how they actually teach the exercise movements. Number three, the nice thing that we found when I was running my company was that the clients and patients that we were working with, they really appreciated the ability of our staff to be able to work with them on correcting their postural deviations and help to increase their overall performance in executing many, many different exercise movements. Number four, with those satisfied clients, what you're going to find is you have just a really strong referral network of current clients and also from those clients, they tend to refer their family and friends to those individuals on your staff that are actually doing the training sessions, which is a great um, feeling that I always had was that when you see the 12-year-old that I worked with, I actually started working with his mom first, then I started working with JT, and then from JT I started training his father. And then when his grandparents visited, I would train his grandparents and then other relatives that were visiting uh, within that Cambridge area. The other thing that we're looking at is how posture assessments will lead into the actual design of the exercise program. Many times fitness professionals that don't do a deep, very detailed assessment randomly start selecting exercises and they really don't look at the person's posture alignment. So if you're planning on teaching exercise movements or you educate and train a staff, it's one of the most important critical areas I believe in establishing a sound exercise program. So let me give you an idea of how we sequence and we structure our overall assessment program and how we initiate our exercise structure. The first thing that we perform is static posture assessments. In, in the longer version of this presentation that I'll be doing in, in uh, September, I'll be going over the sequence and all the details and how you want to actually perform these posture assessments, but I'm going to give you a brief outline today. Number one, we do static posture assessments in the standing position. So we'll take four pictures of that new member or client in the anterior position, two lateral photos, and we'll also take a posterior picture of them. Next, we'll have that individual sit in a chair so that we'll take pictures of them against a posture grid so that we can see how they sit in a seated position. Usually one's posture develops in a, a more poor alignment when they're in the seated position. So I'm sure the majority of the clients and members that you have, they're working in an office or corporate setting in most cases. So the majority of the population, because they're sitting, we need to analyze their alignment in the seated position. Next, we'll, we'll do a detailed posture assessment or what we call dynamic posture assessments where the client's moving. They may be performing exercise movements against our posture grid so we can analyze their movement patterns and how their posture gets affected when they're doing a squatting motion 
when they're performing a lunge, when they're doing a lateral raise, when they're doing a bicep curl movement. So whether it's an upper body or lower body exercise, we're analyzing that per person or client performing that dynamic movement pattern. Next, we'll incorporate and teach that new member our four points of posture program. And I'll be going over this in more detail in September. Then from that overall static and dynamic posture assessment, we then start going into the corrective exercise um, program structure. So here's the 12 year old I told you that I would share with you and you can see now this is back in the mid 90s and I'll just give you his initials we'll call him JT and JT is 12 years old and you'll see from a lateral view how poor his posture is so you can see that he has this uh, forward head protrusion in here he has what we call an exaggerated kyphotic curve in his thoracic area and then his lower lumbar area he has what we call an exaggerated lordotic curve. In addition, his shoulder's not centered. If you take a look where his shoulder is, the positioning of that. Now when we look at the anterior view analysis, you can see he has what we call a rounded shoulder look. He has a sunken in chest area, and then you can see his rectus abdominis area and obliques in here and how undefined it is. He also has a lot of internal rotation. A lot of the a worldwide population has internal rotation. So of course, if I was going to teach JT exercise movements, if I was not analyzing his postural position, I'm gonna be causing more harm for him than good. Now I wanna show you what the pictures look like of what took place three weeks later. I trained JT after school on Monday, Wednesday, and from two o'clock to three o'clock, three days per week. Then going into, uh, you can take a look at his, his postural position, how it's improved over this short period of time. And so when we teach our students and we teach our individuals to become certified posture specialists, we try to create a specific timeline of when that client or new member can start seeing structural improvement and balance. So I want you to take a look at side-by-side -side photos of JT both from the lateral, uh, from the anterior view, what took place during the initial assessment and what took place three weeks later. And you should see an improvement. You'll also notice that JT has a haircut that he got between this three week period of time. And then if you take a look at JT from the lateral view, you can see JT's 29 years old now and his posture is really balanced and even. If you had seen JT walk into our facility, his neurological ability and kinesthetic awareness is very uh, poor. He almost walked in like he was an old man. Now he's able to be, now he's actually takes Zumba classes, he takes dance classes, and his neurological ability and his posture is really improved. So his parents were very happy to see these before and after photos. So I want to give you an idea which professions can perform posture assessments and design the exercise programs to enhance it. Well, of course, personal fitness trainers. I was a personal fitness trainer myself, and I felt that this was um, an area that I just really enjoyed working with. It made my job more interesting on a daily basis when I was working with individuals, and I really analyzed their structure to see where they were at, and then on a uh, whether I was training them one day a week, two days a week, or three days a week, getting the idea of seeing their posture change. The other group of professionals that can look at performing posture assessments on their uh, clients would be all the group exercise instructors that includes Pilates instructors, yoga instructors, those that teach Les Mills classes such as body pump and so on. In addition, the next group we're looking at would be athletic trainers and those that teach strength and conditioning and sports performance programs for their clients. And of course, physical therapists and chiropractors, we work with them in helping implement our posture assessment programs at their facilities. And the different settings that you can incorporate a posture program would be commercial health clubs and gyms. Of course, you'd want to set this up so that you have a screening process set up so when everybody becomes a new member, you have a very detailed assessment program. And what we found is that the retention and new membership, because you have a solid and good quality assessment program, it's going to allow for additional members wanting to come on board. Because the majority of facilities, not only in the United States but worldwide, they tend to look at the assessment program of a new member and make that assessment program so it's so short and not very detailed oriented, typically members don't feel like they're getting their money's worth. And I think that's really important. So the other settings you could be in would be a YMC or JCC, 
sports performance clinics, medically based fitness facilities, personal training, uh, Pilates studios, different fitness franchises like Curves or Snap Fitness, and college recreational centers. So it's really any type of facility that's performing exercise programming can implement and bring on a posture assessment program into their facility. So let me give you a little overview of the state of the industry. So I only have about 10 minutes left, so I'm going to have to really hurry up here. Number one is roughly 15% of individuals that join a health club are joining for the group exercise programs that include TRX or using suspension trainers, maybe taking Pilates courses, maybe taking body pump classes. And the other 85% of the membership is joining to use the cardiovascular equipment and strength training machines and free weight area. Now, I put in bracket specific programming, and what I mean by this is that cardiovascular training programs, if you're familiar with watching people in the health club, typically they're using elliptical trainers and treadmills in poor posture. I think we've all seen that, where we've looked over, we've seen somebody on an elliptical trainer, their head's forward and rounded out, or we've seen individuals performing strength training movements in poor alignment and performing the movements incorrectly. Well, if 85% of your membership is joining to use these two areas, that allows you to develop a very strong educational team of personal trainers and others that focus focus on program design, to have programs teaching people how to do cardiovascular training correctly in good alignment, and also all the exercise movements in proper posture and alignment too. So that's an advantage for the health clubs knowing those numbers already. Number three, the majority of healthcare expenses are going towards musculoskeletal injuries. So that's an area in which health clubs and fitness facilities can develop strong relationships with companies and corporations, whether in the United States or internationally, that are working to reduce their healthcare expense. So it's very easy now if you have a strong posture assessment program to go into a human resource department at a major company, state, or uh, federal organization and say, look, our goal is we want to reduce health care costs for your uh, organization and your company. We've got the health club or fitness facility that can do that. The fourth thing we need to look at is bringing all the staff on board so that everyone understands how to do posture assessments and how to do all the exercise moves correctly. Typically in the United States, we have individuals that may just go through a personal training certification or they may also go through an undergraduate degree. And the educational levels are, are all varied and different. And the problem with it is that when we look and I consult with health clubs and fitness facilities around the world, when I go into a fitness facility, I'll see trainers doing all sorts of crazy movements. Uh, some staff are doing movements well, other ones are teaching movements incorrectly. So the goal is to get everybody within the staff on the same page. So the advantage really falls to somebody that's well educated that looks at becoming a posture specialist in this area. So postural injuries, if we take a look, and this is one of our administrators at the university, you'll see is her postural alignment and how poor it is. You know, you can see that she has this forward head protrusion, rounded back, and it's a pretty similar position, and you can imagine all the different injuries that one could have in this type of alignment. And I'm going to go through in detail in September those postural injuries that one could, uh, one could receive if they tend to sit in this postural position for more than a few years. Next are factors that lead towards postural deviation, and there are many of them, and it's important to understand. And I've kind of designated almost 10 areas in which somebody's posture could develop very poor situations over a certain period of time. And again, I'll be going over this in detail in September. Another thing that we need to look at is why so many health club, new health club gym goers tend to quit after such a short period of time. Roughly, you'll find that 70% of current gym owners will quit after six months. So I kind of asked three questions here. And you can ask yourself this if your facility is doing a good job. Is your facility doing a good job if current gym owners are quitting this, at this high percentage after six months? Can fitness professionals help the population or new members in a better way? And I think we do. I think we can. I think we can show a better caring process and how somebody becomes a member and how we assess them and how we teach them how to exercise correctly when they first join. Then the third thing is how do you want to position yourself and your company so that you're creating a business model that's going to reduce the amount of gym owners quitting at such a high rate after a short period of time.
The next thing we're looking at is that things are very competitive. We know that there's so many more personal trainers out there that are joining the ranks within, within the world. There are also more Pilates instructors, yoga instructors, those that are focusing on sports performance. And as you know, there's only so many college universities. There's so many professional sports teams. So with this increasing number of fitness and health professionals, coming on board, there's going to be less opportunities for health clubs and fitness facilities to grow their market with all the competition around. In addition, there's a, there's a higher growth of health clubs and fitness facilities that are coming out and, and, um, and, and growing in different cities around the world. So there's going to be more competition from other fitness professionals and also competition from facilities growth. So we need to look at how are we going to re-educate our staff and rebrand them so that they're higher that they they have a higher educational level and that they can meet the demands made upon it on the public. And the public, as I've talked about, they have higher amounts of musculoskeletal injuries that a really trained, well, really well trained professional can be able to teach, uh, to teach the correction process. I think posture programming is a very innovative programming and it becomes specialized and that's where you can really differentiate your facility and market it in a completely different right way and brand yourself as a leader within your community. And even if you have more than one facility and you have let's say 10 or 20 or 30 facilities, we work with organizations on how to implement our programs, not only for one individual site, but many different sites. So the goal is that everyone from the front desk staff to your sales staff to if you have registered dietitians and you have physical therapists and physiotherapists and staff or you have sports performance coaches, everybody's on board with the overall philosophy of presenting a posture assessment program to a new member or to a new client or to a new patient. And the goal is I've listed five things. The first one, is, of course, is to retain clients and the patients that you have and the members. We don't want to see losses or people leaving, going to a facility down the street that's offering better high-quality programming and education. Number two, you need to have a program in place that's going to attract more referrals based on the quality of your membership and what they're receiving. Number three, we need to look at increasing our fee-based participation in specialized programming where you can specialize programming for small group and larger groups for the, for the posture-based uh, correction programs. Next, you need to look at what's going to appeal to a facility overall client and patient base. And we've got a lot of unique programs that um, we specialize for different groups. And then also, lastly, increasing your one-on-one -on -one training so that your personal trainers aren't just training five or ten sessions per week, but they're training 35 to 40 sessions per week. And that was my goal when I ran my personal training business. I wanted to see my personal trainer be successful where they were training at a minimum 30 to 35 sessions a week. If they were doing 30 to 35 sessions a week, that meant that we were bringing in more revenue for personal training revenue, it retained our current members, and we were able to build our client base and our membership base. So posture programs for different populations, and I want to just address that. You can develop posture programs for children and kids, and remember, two-thirds of children or teens, if you were to poll them, two-thirds of them would have back pain already in their cervical to lower back area. You can focus on older adults and seniors during certain times of the day in your health club so that between early in the morning and midday you can have a lot of older adults coming in for posture programming. For women of all ages, women have certain structural issues that we need to address and I'll go over that in September's presentation. And the next level would be athletic teams and sports teams. In order for strength, power, and speed to increase, you need to make sure that your, cl that your clients that are on sports teams, that their posture and body alignment is perfect. Does that make sense? So we want to make sure that if we're going to focus in those three areas, our athletes need to be in good alignment. And then the fifth area would be corporate wellness. That's a whole unique area where you can contact and work with all the companies and organizations within your city to attract and develop very good uh, corporate partnership membership programs based on posture assessment programs. Posture modif I only have about two minutes left, so I've got to hurry up here. Posture modifications depend on a few things. Number one is having a well-educated team that teaches exercise movements where they observe and evaluate at a very high level. Number two is learning how to incorporate the posture assessment so that you have visual and measurable results to be able to share with a member or a client and show them the details of how the programs are working. Number three, you have to have a posture plan in place 
so that your members are working on their posture outside the facility. So if you're only seeing them three days a week, that they're working their posture the other four days a week. And lastly, that they have to be patient with the process when their posture improves. You saw what JT was able to do within three weeks period of time. And then lastly, branding yourself. I'll go over in detail in September how detailed our assessments are, and that's what's going to be really fun. I'll be able to share with you how our assessments are structured and how they make sense and how from our assessments we develop some of the best exercise and rehab programs, I think, in the world. And overall, here's a little bit of a model that we're looking at with our educational programs, helping your facilities bring on new clients or patients, retaining the current clients and patients and developing a strong referral network of happy members and happy clients. So here's my information, my contact information. Again, my email address is ken at mpionline.org. My website's mpionline.org. And then also, here's my date for my posture assessment lecture, which is titled A Posture Analysis Program for Business Growth and Development. It's on Tuesday, September 25th, and it will be a 90-minute webinar. We'll, we'll be able to go over a lot more detailed information. So I want to ask, does anyone have any questions at this time? Yeah, Ken, that was great. What we what we what we uh, might do is I will, if everybody has questions, please again um, uh, write them into your webinar control panel, and um, I'm going to relay them to Ken. It's a great opportunity to connect with with Ken now and um, and 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 just get a bit more targeted information. So we appreciate your insights and um, and and you presenting today so openly and generously, Ken. Um, so. Um, what we might do, I've got one question coming through um, at the, a minute, but just before we go, so everyone have a think of those questions. Um, just before we get into that, I just want to uh, make sure that er everybody has the opportunity to head over to our social media channels to leave your comments and feedback, which we truly appreciate. And we can also get Ken to, to come on board and answer some more questions um, if, if something strikes you later. So we have a Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash fitness business summit. And we massively value your feedback, your comments and questions. So jump on there and post anything and everything that you think about our event, WF Boss, even if it's a massive criticism or a kind comment. We really do appreciate your feedback and it means a lot to us. Um, and we definitely get our presenters on board to, to make sure they can continue to connect with you. Um, uh, okay, so um, we'll just open up questions for about 10 minutes. Ken, you've got some flying through now. Um, so again, the control panel where it says questions, you can enter them in. Um, Eric, um, Erica has asked, uh, can you give the meaning of poor posture again, Ken? Can you just give uh, her that meaning? Uh, at the start, you had that slide, said what the meaning of poor posture was. She says she didn't write that fast and she just missed it. So if you could, sure. if you could drag that, that would be great. Sure. Let me give you that. It's the faulty relationship of various body parts, which increases strain on the musculoskeletal system producing less efficient balance of the body over its base support. And I'm going to if you could put that in the chat box. actually just kind of plug that into if possible. Yeah, I'm gonna put that in the chat box. Hold on one second. We'll get you to, to post that in there. Everyone you have got a chat box down there which um, you can Yeah um, we'll copy and paste it. Um, here so I go. Okay so that, that will be there. Let's see. Can you see it? I just posted it. Erica, I just posted. Okay, so Erica, just let us know if you've got that. It's okay. Erica, right? Yeah. Uh, she says she doesn't have it just yet, but if you go to the chat box, it's uh, here. I'll 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 pop that in for you too. Okay, you should have that. If you could just change. Well, I your think um, to... I think Rana only. You can change it to who it goes yeah, to. Yeah, I think it says to organize or panelists only. Okay. Oh, I can. Okay. Um, okay, so does anybody have any more questions? Well, we're getting to that as well. Um, if anyone has any questions about uh, Ken, I mean, Ken, one thing I just want to ask, and this is a, probably a valuable question in case anyone's thinking it, um, what, what like direct real-time results have you seen um, like 
benefits that have been added to fitness businesses, um, like in terms of maybe increased revenue or retention? Do you have stats? Um, I'm sure you're going to share them in September, but just quickly, what are um, some of the, the, the big wins that you've had and, and seen in a fitness business when someone's come on board and implemented a, a system like, like you're talking about? Sure. It, w w one of the things that we like tracking when we when we work with facilities and implementation is that that they can expect at least a 30 to 35 percent increase in their personal training uh, revenue or clients, and overall we're looking at a 25 percent increase in the membership growth for a given facility. And again, I, I had a whole list of the different types of facilities in which the posture program has been uh, implemented. So whether it's a culinary, uh, a uh, health facility, commercial health club or health facility, um, those are the numbers that we're looking for. So that as the staff gets educated and they become quite familiar with doing the posture assessments and bringing on the programming and practicing it, then seeing them happy and really gaining those type of results is, is, has been really fantastic overall. Okay, great. Um, I've just, um, for Erica, we've just translated that to you, so you should be able to get that now. There it is. Um, so if there's any more questions, everyone, uh, make sure you do head over to um, to the Facebook page and post them. Um, Ken's obviously had a massive, uh, just a huge experience with the industry, and um, it's really it's really um, great to see because I, I tend to find, Ken, one of the experiences I've had personally as a personal trainer is that there's a lack of... Um, people people want that specific technical professional help. So when you can add that professional edge into your business and show them that there is an actual system that you're following to help them get real time sort of uh, results that they can actually measure and test, that's a real plus to a personal training business because it's not just it, it makes it more than just about the exercise. It actually brings brings you up from just a personal trainer to that sort of professional um, almost. Um, almost up to like a, a, a chiropractor or physio type type scenario. Yeah, I, I agree, Ron. And that's one of the things that really can differentiate you as a personal trainer because you think about how long a, a career can be as a personal trainer or fitness professional. And having the, the skill set and the ability to be able to do these assessments have very specific visual measurable tracking. And I think – what we're going to see on a worldwide basis from a professional standpoint is really showing the statistics and metrics of how the personal training programs are, are performing and being conducted. Yeah. And so I think what we've done is we've really kind of created a great program where everything's organized in a specific sequence so that you're able to show posture pictures of before and after. You can incorporate and use posture assessment software that shows all the deviation points of forward head protrusion, one shoulder being higher or lower than the other, a tilted pelvic area, those. And we're actually to be able to show and say, look, your posture number is here right now, and my goal is I want your posture number to be down to zero. And the interesting thing is, on a national level, at least in the United States, the majority, when we say posture number, it tends to be around 35. Our yeah. goal is that that posture number should get down into the single zero. Single. With the picture of JT, if I were to plug his pictures into the posture assessment software, his posture number would be somewhere around a 50 to 55. Wow. So the majority of the population worldwide is a posture number of 35, and our goal is to get it down. In, and we also measure and test for uh, joint range of motion using a goniometer, which is a, which is a specialized skill set to measure the flexibility of each individual joint structure based on its merits. In body alignment, typically the joint range of motion is going to be very poor. Okay. And I'll go over that a little bit too when we have that webinar well, in the future. We've got some questions um, flying And then the last then thing too. is balance so, and center. Sorry. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I just thought I'd, I'd, okay. I'd go through go ahead, Rana. a bunch. So um, it says uh, George from uh, Spain. He said, can a trainer be certified as a postural personal trainer it, being in another country? I mean, um, so George is from Spain. Sorry if I haven't pronounced your name right. Uh, but, but yeah, is that – Sure. Can you answer that quickly? Yeah. Uh, George, j just to let you know, we uh, – 
I've been involved in uh, distance education at the college or university for 12 years now, so I love it. And, um, you know, I was really honored uh, when Rana uh, contacted me to get on board with WFBOS. So if you go to our website, you'll see we've actually created our certified posture specialist program so it can be delivered through an online or distance learning environment. So our students have roughly three months of unlimited access to go through our educational programs. And if for any reason, if any of our students need a little bit longer time, we'll extend that three month window to four to five months if necessary. But um, we're able to educate uh, trainers and physical therapists and chiropractors worldwide that go through our educational pro. And also we've created on-site workshops. Um, for example, I had told Rana before, I went to the world-class clubs in Moscow, Russia. I was there for a whole week um, for their conference working on training their staff. So we also travel to uh, internationally in the United States doing workshops and trainings. But you can go through the education online too. Okay, great. Um well, that's, that's, that's handy. So that obviously has that international reach, just like what we're doing. Another couple of questions as well um, is uh, from Philippe. He's got a couple that you'll be really – actually good questions. Um, if, you, if I want to be unique in the fitness business, what is your advice? So if I want to be unique, what is your advice? And also, if the memberships increase 35%, what is the secret of implementation? Okay, well, let's do. We got to break that down into two questions. So let, let me answer the last one first. The implementation part. Uh, the implementation part is going to require uh, specific assessments set up, really, really good quality health medical questionnaire forms, and the assessment documents also. So we kind of like to have everything in a complete package. So when you actually sit down with that new member or client. You're able to present to them a very professional package of information. We sequence the assessments in a certain order. So um, you may go through your body composition assessments, heart rate, blood pressure, your cardiovascular testing, and then we start going into our posture programming where um, I went over it briefly, but uh, you're going to want a decent, you know, a good uh, digital camera so that you can take pictures. And you also want to probably have a posture grid so that our posture grids that we have are usually set up so two inches by two inch block so we can see that the majority of the population is going to have deviations that we need to measure and track. Also you're going to want to have a goniometer to do flexibility and joint range of motion assessments and if you want to br even bring it to a higher level uh, you're going to want to look at getting posture assessment software. We also have functional capacity software and then a balance or stability testing plate. Usually if somebody's posture is poor, their balance and stability will be off. So that's a number that we track. If somebody's posture starts to improve, their balance and basis of support will increase, and their ability, if you're working with older adults, their chances of them falling will be reduced. But think about it this way. If you're working with a college or professional athlete, their posture improves, their balance and basis of support will improve, and their overall muscular balance will become optimal. So I think that answered your last question. And Ron, if, uh, Bring me back up to speed what the actual first question yeah. was. If you, if you want to be uh, unique in the fitness business, what is your advice? Okay. And I think from the unique standpoint that we try to – and of course, you know, I, as I mentioned, now I, 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 I work – at a university, so I have roughly 20 new students coming in per year that they want to become personal trainers, group exercise and physical therapists, physiotherapists, chiropractors. So each one of them comes in with a mindset of what they want to do, and we work with them on how they need to look at branding themselves and making themselves unique. So when they graduate, they're going to become the that, you know they're going to become successful leaders in the health fitness industry. So one of the things that I usually like to stress is what's going to make you unique and different from everybody else within this city you're in. So that you find that you do differently than other individuals, but there are some core concepts that we found. Number one is that you need to have how you organize and structure your exercise program has to be based on what that person's ability is, whether it's neurological ability, uh, st uh, structural alignment, and what their posture is. So I think 
when we look at exercise program design and the assessments, how they're tied in together, and then from there, if you want to focus on special populations, if you like working with children or older adults or college or professional sports teams, then you eventually need to narrow that niche of the pop you, you feel most comfortable working with. Yeah. And there's other things that will go over in the presentation coming up in September, which I think it will provide more clarity for you and everyone else and how they can make themselves unique within their uh, city and populace. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, we, we look forward to that in September. And Ken, just, just quickly, one last one. I just want to make sure – I know you're going to touch on this in September, but um, Nishant has uh, asked if uh, you could give the types of injuries that occur with poor posture. Maybe if you could just list, list three or four, um, and then obviously in September you'll be giving a lot more information. Sure, sure. Um, and it, it, you know, it, it, they're they're very detailed, and they, and I usually give good a good examples. But the first one will be if you think about it this way, if I'm in an exaggerated kyphotic curve, and you saw how JT was, the vertebral the vertebral bodies with his spine alignment, those are going to be off. They're not going to be balanced. So all the ligamentous structures that connect those vertebral bodies. Ligaments tend to stretch, and when they stretch, they don't want to go back in position. So number one, ligament structures are going to be a, a major factor that are going to become loose. So when they become loose, that person's ability to do trunk flexion, trunk extension, and being able to rotate is going to make for more unstable joint structures in their all throughout their all their vertebral bodies. So what we're finding is an increase in disc injuries, not necessarily from one specific, like let's say lifting a tire out of a car to get to get at that spare tire, but it's usually that poor posture alignment instability in the vertebrae that causes friction in the joint structures and that wear and tear that's caused in the disc. So discs are becoming more herniated both in the cervical thoracia due towards the posture alignment that you saw similar to the way JT looked. The second thing I would say would be neurological disorders. With the increase of forward head protrusion due to being on the computer, uh, also from texting a lot and using your iPhone or cell phone to text or, or using or playing video games, in that hunched over position and having your head in that forward head protrusion is causing specifically in the, in the uh, uh, nerves of that area. So, for example, I was doing a presentation for roughly 250 uh, physiotherapists or physical therapists, and one of the physical therapists was talking, telling the story of how he was getting ready for all-natural bodybuilding shows. And as a physiotherapist or physical therapist, he should be working on posture and body alignment, of course, all the time. But he started doing these bodybuilding shows, getting his body in imbalance, and one morning he went to get out of bed, and he was pushing out of bed, and he actually lost all the innervation in his left arm and his radial nerve, so his tricep lost all of its power. So yeah. neurological issues are becoming increased are, are increasing because of it uh, because of this, and the third area it's, I would stress would be muscular 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 structure imbalances. So for example, um, for the upper trapezius area. This area should feel like jello. If I were to press in your upper trapezius, and if you, if everyone would like, if you just press in your upper neck area, that that should feel like jello. Now, the majority of the population throughout the world, those upper trapezius fibers are very tight. They get so tight where it feels like hard wood or steel or cement. And if you're in good posture alignment and your scapula is balanced and even that those areas in the upper trapezius and levator scapula should feel completely relaxed. So muscular structure imbalances, internal rotation of the shoulder, muscles are imbalanced there, which is causing bicep tendonitis or bicep tearing or fraying, and also rotator cuff tearing or fraying. So typically, a lot of the population has a lot of internal rotation of their glenar humeral or shoulder joint, which is biomechanically putting them in the incorrect position when they're performing activities of daily living, 
And, and on top of that, if you're exercising with internal rotation, you're causing more humeral joint. Yeah. So these are three areas that I just went over with you are areas that you definitely want to address with the clients or new members because you don't want people getting injured when they're involved in your exercise program. You want them improving their performance and reducing the pain that they live with on a daily basis. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that obviously leads to better retention and whatnot too. So, but, um, you know, Ken, we, we look forward to oh, more gosh. of your expertise it's amazing. in uh, September. It's really amazing. So, um, okay. And- thank you, Rana, very much. I, I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, no worries. And look, thank you to everybody else. Uh, make sure you chime in to some more pre-summit sessions, um, you know, and, and let your friends know about it. Ken will be joining us again. So we're very, very um, grateful to have Ken again. Um, the, our full summit starts on the 14th of September. Um, until then, everyone, thanks for joining us today. Thanks again, Ken, for your for sharing your knowledge and your time. Um, and we, we look forward to seeing everybody um, again very soon and again if you have any questions feel free to relay them on our facebook wall and we can always pass them on to ken and get those answered for you so again ken thank you uh and thanks everyone else for your time today and we'll we'll speak soon